so uh, let us continue with whatever we were doing. Uh, so let me uh, very briefly re recall what we have been seeing. So you have been asking this question as to what will the size of uh, uh, the size of the image of an analytic map be okay. So basically you have an analytic function, analytic is the same as holomorphic function on the complex plane. Uh, it is it's defined on an open subset of the complex plane okay and uh, you want to know what is the image we namely uh, you want to know what is the set of values that the function takes uh, and you want to know what this set is uh, in, in this in the topological sense and also how big the set is and I told you that there is the uh, to answer what the set is topologically uh, the set will uh, the, the image of uh, a domain will again be a domain. The reason being that uh, uh, any non-constant uh, analytic function will be a an open map okay that is the so called open mapping theorem right. So the image of a, a domain which is by definition an open connected set will again be an open connected set and of course you know the image of a connected set will be connected because that is the property of a continuous function and analytic functions are of course continuous. So uh, uh, at least you know that the image is a the image of a domain is a domain okay and the image is certainly an open set okay. Now the question is the, the, the next question is mm, that, that we asked uh, was how big is the image okay. So the, uh, so the answer to that uh, 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 at least in the case of let us say uh, analytic functions uh, which are analytic on the whole plane which are called as entire functions. So in that case we have the so called little Picard theorem uh, or the small Picard theorem which says that. Uh, a function which is analytic on the whole plane okay its image will be either the whole plane or it will be a punctured plane namely uh, it will be a, the whole plane minus one value. So that is the only uh, if at all it misses a value if at all it misses values it will miss only one value okay or it will miss no values okay and the case when it misses one value is uh, the, the, the in that case the image is a complex plane minus one value and that is called a punctured plane okay. And the standard example is the exponential function z going to e power z which misses the value 0 and takes every other value uh, which you can verify because any non-zero complex number has a logarithm okay. So um, and, and of course you know if you take functions like polynomials okay then you will see that the image of the whole plane under a polynomial will again be the whole plane and this is for example uh, uh, it is possible to deduce this uh, using the fundamental theorem of algebra that any polynomial equation uh, in one variable in one complex variable with complex coefficients uh, always has all its roots as complex numbers okay. Uh, so um, uh, well so see the idea is that uh, uh, you know in a first course in complex analysis the little Picard theorem is stated okay but since we are uh, since this is advanced complex analysis we would like to see a proof of the little Picard theorem and interestingly I was telling you last time that uh, the key to uh, the, the, the key to the proof of the little Picard theorem that we are going to see is actually uh, having it uh, be, uh, deduced from the so called big Picard theorem or the great Picard theorem and that is interestingly a theorem which involves a singularity okay. So uh, the we have the so called great Picard theorem the great Picard theorem says that uh, you know uh, you take uh, you take a point you take an analytic function and you take a point which is uh, an essential singularity for the function okay and then uh, you take a small uh, disk about the essential singularity small open disk about the essential singularity uh, such that in that disk the function is analytic uh, of course leaving out the singular point and then the image of that disk no matter how small is going to be again the whole complex plane or uh, the whole complex plane minus a single value namely the punctured plane and that is what the great Picard theorem says and uh, that is an amazing fact. Uh, so, uh, so what I want to tell you is that um, we so this leads us to understand what singularities are okay and uh, eventually let me tell you that uh, you know uh, when we try to prove the big Picard theorem uh, we will have to study families of uh, analytic functions with singularities and uh, uh, in particular uh, uh, singularities which are poles okay and uh, 
uh, such functions are called meromorphic functions and so we have to study mer families of mer meromorphic functions we have to do study the topology of uh, the space consisting of uh, uh, elements which are actually meromorphic functions that is the generality in which we will have to go to understand the proof of the great Picard theorem okay. Uh, but to begin with we need to worry about singularity so uh, what I am going to do now is I am going to tell you uh, uh, I mean I am going to recall things about singularities which you have probably seen in the first course in complex analysis okay but uh, uh, but it is anyway good to recall them um, so so let me so let me uh, so let me write here so singularities uh, of an analytic function so singularities of an analytic function uh, is what we are going to worry about uh, so first of all uh, let me recall uh, so what is a singular point of an analytic function so you see by definition a singular point is defined only for a function which is analytic okay if a function is not analytic then there is no question of uh, talking about singularities okay so the idea behind defining a singular point is that the singular point should be approachable by points where the function is analytic a singular point should always be a limit of good points good points for the function means good points uh, uh, I mean points where the function is actually analytic okay so uh, uh, so you know in a way uh, when I say singularity of an analytic function it seems to be you know uh, a misnomer or uh, you know uh, it is on, on, on the one hand an analytic function is supposed to be uh, analytic at all the points where it is defined okay and then I say singularity of an analytic function it sometimes looks odd but that is not the point the point is that you see a function which is analytic is usually uh, uh, analyticity is defined on an open set okay there is an open set of points uh, at each of which the function is analytic and of course you know for the definition of analyticity you need an open set you need every point to be an interior point of the domain of analyticity okay. Uh, so but the, the question is that if I move to the boundary of this open set if I go to a point in the boundary of this open set then how is it that the function is going to behave that point may be a point where the function might continue to be analytic or it may fail to be analytic okay and it is uh, it is only about these boundary points uh, in the uh, boundary points of the domain uh, or the open set where the analytic function is defined these are the points that we have to study uh, for singularities okay. So, uh, uh, so the, the so the very first uh, thing is that you know a singular point is defined only for an analytic function okay and by definition it is a point such that it is approachable or it is the limit of points where the function is analytic okay so so let me write that down uh, uh, a singular point point z0 of an analytic function f of z is a uh, limit of points where uh, uh, f is analytic but such that a priori uh, f may not be defined at z now. So you see so look at this definition very carefully what it says is that you know a point is it not uh, in the complex plane is a singular point for an analytic function if you can approach that point uh, it is a limit of points where the function is uh, analytic okay but at that point itself the function may not be defined okay and I, I of course uh, uh, the phrase a priori means is that uh, to begin with okay or in advance you do not know whether f is defined at z0 or uh, whether f can be defined at z0 these are things that you do not know 
okay so it's a it's a point which is outside so singular a singular point is a point which is outside the domain uh, of definition it's outside the open set where the function is defined and uh, your question is uh, whether the function uh, how does a function behave uh, uh, close to that point you see you what you must understand is the the reason why we define a singularity like this is because you see i want to uh, study a function at a singularity okay and i and i told you what is the motivation why sh why should we at all worry about functions with singularities uh, the answer is because singularities occur not all functions are going to be entire okay not all functions that you are going to study are going to be defined on the whole complex plane okay lots of functions uh, occur uh, they, they 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 come come up naturally with singularities so for example you know you take the identity function f of z equal to z that is the identity function that is of course uh, uh, entire okay but the moment you invert it if I if I take f of z equal to 1 by z okay then uh, you see immediately at 0 it is not defined okay so the problem is that there are the, uh, even you uh, it is very easy you know to get hold of functions which, which you cannot define at a point and uh, but that point is surrounded by points where the function is analytic okay therefore uh, such a point is a singular point okay so singular points will come very naturally they 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 are uh, they are the most uh, natural things that you have to come uh, come across can okay? you have to study okay and of course i told you the 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 first motivation was that you know the uh, uh, we are trying to prove the big picard theorem which is actually a theorem uh, about uh, the mapping uh, properties of a function uh, around uh, an essential singularity okay so that's also a motivation as to why you worry about singularities okay so uh, let me come back to this uh, uh, this definition of singularity see the point is that i have a point that there is a point z0 where the function is not defined okay but i would like to study the function close to that point okay and uh, why should i study the function close to that uh, that point because that's the only way i can study how the function behaves as i go closer and closer to that point okay so it means that no matter how close i get to z0 i should be able to study the function okay that means the the function should be defined no matter how close i get get to z0 that's the only only if the function is defined can i study it okay so that's the reason why a singular point is always uh, defined as a limit of good points okay so uh, so i uh, what i want to tell you is that there are functions for which you know uh, uh, singularities uh, per se don't exist okay so for example uh, uh, take the take the example of uh, f of z equal to let's say mod z the whole square okay then uh, if you take f of z equal to mod z the whole square this is of course defined on the whole complex plane okay and if you check uh, mod z the whole square is z into z bar where z bar is a conjugate of z okay and uh, you will see that the cauchy riemann equations are satisfied only at the origin okay so if at all this function is differentiable it will be only at the origin okay so certainly uh, the function cannot be you cannot find a single point where this function is analytic okay because analyticity means that the function should not only be that point it should also be in a whole neighborhood around that point but there is no such point the only point where this function f of z equal to z squared mod z the whole squared is uh, differentiable is the origin and at that point it's not analytic because at no other point it's differentiable so far if you take this function what is the set of singularities it's the empty set i mean in fact singularities are not even defined because it's not even analytic okay so what you must understand is that singularities are defined only for analytic functions okay you do you are we are not worried about functions that are not analytic in the first place okay so that's one thing that's one point then the then the second thing is that you know uh, uh, singularities come in two uh, in two categories if you want or two types okay and one is friendly uh, one is less friendly the other is more friendly okay see the more friendly ones are called the so called isolated singularities okay uh, what's an isolated singularity uh, it's a point where the function has a singularity but uh, there is a small open disk surrounding that point where the function has no other singularities so it means that there is a deleted neighborhood of the point where the function is analytic okay uh, such singularities are called isolated singularities okay and then there the 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 less friendlier singularities are the so called non isolated singularities okay and uh, these are more uh, difficult to study okay uh, 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 the standard example of uh, non isolated singularity is the is that of uh, uh, you know uh, the log function okay if you take uh, f of z equal to log z to be the principal uh, 
a branch of the logarithm okay uh, you you know that uh, to make it analytic you have to make a you have to throw out the negative real axis along with the origin of course origin uh, will never come into the picture because you cannot define log 0 okay and then you will have to cut out the negative real axis okay and then you get the so called slit plane it is the plane minus uh, the uh, real axis from uh, the origin to the uh, going to minus infinity the that whole line segment that, that whole ray is cut off okay. So, this is the function on way this is the domain the slit plane is the domain where the principal branch of the logarithm can be defined and it is analytic there and every point on the negative real axis is a singularity by definition because the function is not uh, defined there and uh, it is not analytic uh, at, the, at, the, at those points okay. So, um, well in fact the truth is that the function can be defined at each of those points but you cannot define it in such a way that it becomes analytic okay uh, uh, on the on the on the whole uh, punctured plane okay. So, uh, the negative real axis uh, in the case of uh, 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 along with the origin is uh, the, these the all the points on this uh, ray they are all examples of non isolated singularities okay. So, so let me write that down. Um, uh, so, uh, singularities are of two types uh, isolated and non isolated uh, well so so let me write that down uh, is it not is an isolated singularity of f of z if there exists an open disk 0 less than mod z minus z not less than epsilon for some epsilon greater than 0 where f is analytic. This is just another way of saying that uh, there is a small neighborhood around z naught where the function f is analytic okay. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, and what about a non isolated singularity well uh, 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 singularities which are not isolated are non isolated singularities okay uh, as the as the as the name says. So, uh, uh, singularities that are not isolated are non isolated okay and of course uh, the examples are well uh, you take f of z uh, equal to 1 by z then z equal to 0 uh, is of course uh, an isolated singularity then I can take f of z equal to if you want sin z over z uh, uh, again z equal to 0 is an isolated singularity okay. But you will recognize immediately that uh, the limit as z tends to 0 sin z by z is 1. Uh, so, uh, it is a singularity that can be really removed okay uh, we will see about that very soon. Uh, then uh, I, I let me give you the principal branch of the logarithm f of z equal to principal branch of log z which is uh, uh, ln mod z plus i times principal argument of z uh, with uh, principal argument of z varying from minus pi to pi minus pi included pi not included plus pi not included and this is uh, so uh, so let me write here uh, uh, the uh, uh, negative real axis including 0 or uh, or let me say points on the negative real axis including 0 
uh, are non isolated singularities. So, uh, the logarithm uh, of course, you know you have to uh, uh, also keep in mind uh, the domain of definition. So, in the case f of z the first example f of z equal to 1 by z the domain of definition is the punctured plane uh, the complex plane minus the origin and the origin is the isolated singularity. In the second case also it is the punctured plane it is the complex plane minus the origin. And in the third case of course, uh, the principal branch of the logarithm it is the slit plane. So, it is the plane minus uh, the negative real axis along with the origin removed ok, fine. So, uh, well that is that. Now, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, so, let me uh, 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 tell you that we are worried only about uh, isolated singularities, uh, we will not be worried about the non-isolated singularities. Uh, but then uh, let me also tell you that uh, what is uh, uh, the way to study non isolated singularities the uh, one of the theories that helps in the study of non isolated singularities is the theory of Riemann surfaces ok. So, the point is that when you have non isolated singularities uh, then you basically uh, have usually you have a curve uh, where which is full of points where uh, uh, there are singularities ok. So, in the case of the principal branch of the logarithm this curve is actually the negative real axis ok. Uh, and uh, such a curve is called a branch uh, branching curve or a branch locus ok of your function and the way to study that is to uh, 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 do what is called uh, uh, to go to what is called the Riemann surface of the corresponding uh, function ok. So, there is a the, the key to study studying simple uh, non isolated singularities which lie on a curve is a study of uh, uh, will lead you will lead you to the study of Riemann surfaces ok. But anyway we are not going to do that, but this is just to tell you that uh, non isolated singularities can also be studied alright. And then you can also have a very situ a strange situation uh, uh, like uh, uh, there may be a function which has only one singularity and that one singularity alone may be non isolated and all the other singularities may be isolated you can you can have all kinds of examples. So, so here is so let me give you one more example. So, here is another example you take f of z to be 1 by sin of 1 by z ok. Uh, look at this function 1 by sin 1 by z you see uh, the point is that whenever you take the reciprocal of a function your reciprocal is always in trouble whenever the function vanishes ok. So, when I write 1 by sin 1 by z this is cosecant uh, of 1 by z ok and the problem with uh, this function is whenever the denominator which is sin 1 by z vanishes and you know sin 1 by z vanishes when whenever 1 by z is n pi. So, the problem is that the problem is at the point z is equal to uh, 1 by n pi where n is uh, where n is an integer ok. Uh, so, this is the uh, uh, these are the points and among these you know uh, you can see that uh, uh, if you if you take the function sin 1 by z that is already that all already involves 1 by z and 1 by z is not defined at 0 ok. So, 0 is already a problem for the function sin for one for the function 1 by z. So, it is also a problem for the function sin 1 by z ok. Therefore, you see uh, uh, of course, when I write uh, 1 by n pi I must make sure that n cannot be 0 ok because it does not make sense. So, uh, n cannot be 0, but then I should also include z equal to 0 because this is a point uh, where the function can even the function the denominator is not defined namely sin 1 by z is not defined ok. Now, if you look at it carefully see this uh, uh, as n becomes larger in size ok 1 by n z 1 by n pi comes closer and closer to the origin ok and therefore you see but all these 1 by n pi's for various n not, not 0 they are all isolated uh, singularities ok. In fact, they will be simple poles as we will see later ok, but the origin will be a non isolated singularity. So, here is an example of a function which has one uh, singularity which is non isolated and all other singularities are isolated ok. So, so let me uh, write this down uh, z equal to 1 by n pi uh, n 
uh, an integer which is different from 0 these are all uh, isolated singularities and z equal to 0 uh, is uh, non isolated. So you see uh, you can have uh, so this is another interesting example okay fine so uh, what we will do is that we will start worrying about only isolated singularities okay and so uh, uh, we will we will we will leave out the case of non isolated singularities uh, uh, and go to the case of isolated singularities. So how do you uh, classify isolated singularities? So this is again something that you should have done uh, in a first course in complex analysis the, the isolated singularities are classified as removable singularities, poles and essential singularities okay. So let me let me recall uh, what these things are. Uh, so let me first say in words uh, what is a removable singularity, a removable singularity is essentially a singularity that can be removed namely that is a that is a that is an isolated singularity okay but the function can be extended to the singularity in a way that it becomes analytic okay uh, it is like it is the analog of uh, 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 removable discontinuity that you study in first uh, first grade analysis okay. So well um, um, then you have the so called poles what kind of singularities are poles these are going to be the poles are supposed to be thought of as zeros of the denominator okay uh, so the the point is that you cannot divide by zero so whenever the denominator becomes zero uh, the function is not defined so all the places where the denominator becomes zero these are the poles okay and uh, they should be and when i say zero it should be zero of certain order okay uh, and uh, in general you think of poles as zeros of the denominator uh, the other way of saying it is that zero the poles are actually zeros of the reciprocal of the function okay so uh, a zero of the reciprocal of the function okay is exactly what a pole of the function is okay and then what are essential singularities by definition these are the singularities which are neither zeros nor uh, neither poles nor removable okay that is a clever way of defining them because then you do not have to uh, uh, you do not have to define them separately okay. So let me write down these definitions um, uh, so isolated singularities are of three types so the first one is the uh, they are called removable uh, singularities the second one is are called poles and the third ones are the essential okay and by definition the s so so if you go to definitions essential is defined as uh, not removable uh, not pole okay uh, that is how you define essential singularity and uh, you may be wondering why the name essential singularity uh, well the, the uh, let me tell you they are really essential uh, because they kind of uh, completely distinguish the function uh, the behavior of the function the neighborhood of the essential singularity can distinguish the function from other functions. So it, it is an though it is a singularity of the function it is like it is an it is very essential for the function it can it can distinguish the function it holds all the information more or less about the function okay that is why it is called essential. The behavior of the function in a neighborhood of the essential singularity uh, completely holds uh, the holds the full information about the function okay that is why it is called essential okay we will see more about this later and of course pole is let me say this is 0 of the reciprocal this is what a pole is and removable is uh, uh, well to say it in the simplest words it can be removed. 
So, uh, this is uh, this is as uh, simple as it goes, but then um, you know, uh, so there are there are many ways of uh, characterizing the so called removable singularities, poles, uh, and essential singularities, and um, the uh, uh, one of the keys to that the doing these things. Or for that matter, one of the keys to studying uh, the function around an, uh, an isolated singularity is the so called Laurent expansion of the function. Okay. So, uh, this is how you would have uh, uh, you would have all gone through a first course in complex analysis where you have used Laurent, uh, you have come across Laurent series and then you have used the residue theorem often trying to find the residue at a pole and so on and so forth. So, uh, the Laurent series is one concrete way of trying to get a formula for the function as a series of some uh, of powers both positive and negative around a uh, isolated singularity. So, uh, so let me let me uh, 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 let me state the following thing. So, so this is let me just recall this is Laurent's theorem which is um, kind of uh, very helpful uh, to study functions around a, around a, a isolated singularity. Okay. So, so here is Laurent's theorem. Uh, uh, if uh, Z naught is an isolated singularity of f of Z, then uh, f of Z is equal to sigma a n Z minus Z naught to the power of n, n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity okay. uh, 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 this is the Laurent series of f about z naught ok, uh, valid in uh, 0 less than mod z minus z naught less than r ok uh, where r is the distance is uh, is the distance from z naught to the next singularity Uh, of f. So, uh, uh, what do I mean by uh, next singularity of f? What I mean by that is uh, the next nearest singularity of f. So, so, maybe so let me write next nearest ok. So, this is the this is the Laurent's theorem ok. I have I have stated Laurent's theorem for an isolated singularity ok, but Laurent's theorem is also valid in an annulus actually ok. So, uh, and you know a deleted a punctured disc is a special case of uh, an annulus with the inner radius 0 you know an annulus about a point is uh, uh, the open region between two circles centered at that point of different radii ok. And if you make the inner radius 0 ok then you get a punctured disc which is also a special case of the annulus. So, and in that if you make the outer radius infinity then you get the punctured plane. So, the punctured plane is also a special case of uh, an annulus ok. So, for example, if you take the function e power 1 by z ok and you write out the uh, uh, you simply take the uh, what is the Laurent expansion? The Laurent expansion is you you know e power z has a Taylor expansion which is valid for all z and in that Taylor expansion you simply replace z by 1 by z and that that continues to be valid on the whole plane except the origin ok. And the whole plane except the origin is uh, is again uh, uh, an annulus with inner radius 0 outer radius infinity ok. Punctured plane is also a special case of an annulus ok. So, uh, so this is Laurent's theorem uh, and when I write f of z is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity a n z minus z naught power n. Notice first of all that uh, 
uh, what it what this is supposed to mean is that the, the, the series on the right converges and it converges to f that is what it means okay. And uh, technically what are these ans the Laurent coefficients they are uh, they are given by integrals okay they are given by integrals so where uh, so uh, a so here uh, an is 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f uh, w dw by w minus z naught to the power of n plus 1 this is the uh, this is the these are the values of these ans and what is this what is this gamma see gamma is a simple so this is so here is z naught and gamma is some simple closed curve gamma is some simple closed curve going once around z naught okay and uh, uh, and of course uh, 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 in the in the region uh, enclosed by gamma uh, uh, z naught is the only singularity and uh, there are no other singularities on gamma for the function okay so um, so this is the Laurent theorem okay and uh, of course you know you must keep in mind that uh, whenever you write an integral like this when you write integral over gamma you know it is very important that for such an integral to be defined if the curve should be a contour so it should be piecewise smooth which means piecewise continuously differentiable curve okay and the integrand should be piecewise continuous at least on the contour for the integral to be defined okay. So um, um, of course I can deform gamma a little bit and the integral will not change that is because of Cauchy's theorem okay. So, uh, in particular if you want to make calculations you can take this gamma to be a small circle centered at z0 okay with sufficiently small radius okay uh, the really the shape of gamma does not matter okay it is only the fact that gamma should be a simple closed curve simple means that it does not cross itself okay and it goes around once exactly once uh, around z0 okay and um, this is Laurent's theorem and the point the important thing about Laurent's theorem is that uh, uh, you, as you would have learnt in a first course in complex analysis the most important thing about Laurent's theorem is uh, the coefficient a minus 1 okay when I put n equal to minus 1 what I get is a minus 1 is 1 by 2 pi i uh, integral over gamma f w d w okay and uh, that is important that is the residue of f at z naught it is the a minus 1 and it is important because it gives you uh, uh, it tells you what the integral of the function is around a singularity okay if I put n equal to minus 1 I get a minus 1 is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f w d w. So integral of f w d w over gamma where gamma is going around a singularity that is a very important thing okay. Cauchy's theorem tells you that if you uh, if you go around a point where the function is analytic okay uh, if you if you try to integrate a function uh, around a closed uh, along a closed curve okay such as the so the function is analytic inside and on the curve then you are going to get 0 that is what Cauchy's theorem says it, you, it says you will not get anything. So but then you can ask the question what will happen if you integrate around a singularity if you take a function and you integrate it along along a singularity around a singularity what will you get the answer is the residue. So that is why residues are important they help you to calculate the integral of a function around a singularity okay. So and that is uh, so essentially it is the uh, that the residue is the residue is 2 pi i uh, so a minus 1 is the residue and 2 pi i times a minus 1 uh, is equal to integral over gamma f w d w that is exactly the residue theorem okay residue theorem actually says that the integral around uh, if you go once around uh, if there is a curve which goes once around a singular point then the integral of the function along that curve is going to give you 2 pi i times the residue that is if you are going around one singularity and then the residue theorem in general says that if you have several singularities then you have to take sum of all those residues so it will be 2 pi i times sum of all the residues so this is the residue this is the residue theorem okay which helps us to compute lot of integrals uh, even real integrals which you would have seen in a first course in complex analysis okay. So very well so this is law of theorem uh, now what I am going to do is I am going to you know uh, go back to our uh, uh, our study which is a study of singularities and I am going to tell you uh, uh, you know we, we saw first that there were 
uh, that, that, that there are three types of singularities. There are the, res, there are the removable singularities, there are the poles and then there are the um, essential singularities. Now, uh, let me say something about uh, poles which uh, is something that you would have uh, you, which you would have come across but you should uh, try to uh, now do this as an exercise that will help you to revise your basic uh, uh, knowledge of complex analysis. So here is a theorem. So here is a theorem. Uh, so this theorem about poles. Uh, let Z not be an isolated singularity of f of z. Then the following conditions are equivalent. Number one f of z has a pole of order n greater than 0 at z0 okay. So uh, and the, uh, that is uh, 1 by f of z has a 0 of order n greater than 0 at z0. So this is the definition of a pole, this is one of the definitions of the pole of a pole. In fact uh, a pole can be defined in many ways and what this theorem says is that it gives you various uh, you know uh, equivalent conditions. So the first thing is the definition of a pole which is the which is as the 0 of the reciprocal okay. So f has a pole of order n if 1 by f which is the reciprocal of f has a 0 of order n okay. Uh, and uh, so and and what is the what is the second one? The second one is limit z tends to z not f of z is infinity. Okay, so this is uh, this is another uh, condition for a pole. The function becomes arbitrarily large in modulus as you approach a pole. Okay, um, and here is the third one, the Laurent expansion. of f at z0 has only finitely many negative powers of z minus z. So this is the uh, this is the way you define a, uh, this is the way you define a uh, pole using the Laurent expansion. See the Laurent expansion helps you to also classify singularities. So what I want you to do now is that you should uh, you need to uh, I want you to go back and as an exercise prove that all the three statements are equal okay. At least you should have seen this in a first course but I want you to re recall the proof that is an exercise okay. And uh, so let me stop here and we will continue in the next, next lecture.